Hi, happy Thursday. Um, I can't believe it's already August. I feel like the summer is flying by. Um, back again today for another Instagram Live uh, Power Up Conversation. Really excited today to have a good friend um, coming to us today from Detroit. So uh, waiting a little bit for Jill to join us in the meantime. Just want to introduce myself. I'm Lisa Solomon. I'm the founder of and CEO of Athenium Collective. And um, I started this company to in teach people uh, and crowdsource knowledge and share expertise uh, around advertising, marketing, and media. And um, it's been a great experience. We're really excited right now. We've got a lot of courses that we are in development. We just wrapped up Media Math. So hopefully next week I'll have those experts come in and talk a little bit about what does that mean. And um, we also um, have some leadership courses and a lot of great stuff in the works, which I'm really excited about. Yay, Jill's here. Let's see if she asks and requests to join us. Um, let's see, maybe I can invite her. Let's see. Um, oh, there it is. Yay. She is joining right now. We're waiting to connect. Yay. Hey. <laughs> How are you? Good. How are you doing, Lisa? I'm good. How are things in Detroit? Uh, sunny today and uh, things are well. Awesome. I think that's fantastic. Good. Always a good thing. Um, and I just want, I was giving a little introduction talking about um, why I'm having these Instagram live conversations and excited to have you here today because I think the co topic that we're going to be talking about is really, really important right now, which is e-commerce. Yes. And given your background, which I'm excited to kind of get into, I think that we're seeing, I mean, when I think about over the last decade, how much e-commerce has changed, but right now there is so much behavior that is being disrupted, obviously, because yeah. it's COVID. Um, I want to get into that a little bit too. And I think, you know, your background is so fascinating. And I always say this, I met Jill at, when I worked at Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so fortunate we have the Just best network ago. because of that. Yeah, exactly. Just a few years ago. Um, and uh, Jill was always uh, one of our amazing salespeople in Detroit. And she has had an incredible background working at some really incredible companies like Amazon and Kellogg's. So we'll talk a little bit about e-commerce. We'll talk also about uh, CPG and how things are changing. So to kick things off, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background from your perspective? Sure. So yeah, kind of a, a crazy ride, but obviously that we met at Microsoft when digital advertising was more about uh, let's see, a Ford F-150 is launching and let's take over the MSN homepage. <laughs> exactly. It's big and splashy and, and really trying to steal eyes from other people. So then I moved on to, to Amazon where it started out being very much the same. It was really, Amazon advertising was very interested in grabbing the eyeballs that were coming to their portal. And it really wasn't a portal in the sense, it was just a shopping environment, but how could we attract customers and, and use that portal to do so. But then it very, very changed uh, when you look at you're now selling some of the clients you're very much calling on to sell the product. So it wasn't just about throwing a banner up on Amazon and hoping that consumer A or consumer B saw it. It was the whole realm of, well, let's make sure when they get to the page, everything is says what it needs to say. Let's make sure we're working with their team to make sure the product's actually in, in, you know, in inventory. Right. Also about the targeting and everything else that went along with really smart digital advertising. And so that was for six years of my life, really partnering with a lot of CPG companies and building out not just advertising, but an e-commerce strategy to find smart ways to get their consumer and we all know that that keeps changing. <laughs> Definitely. COVID has blown it up. And uh, so then I wanted to try my 
And, you know, that sounds very casual, but uh, I was on the Amazon side and I went to a CPG in, in Kellogg being a, a big one in, in Michigan and really helping them drive their marketing efforts on Amazon and reaching that customer coming from the other side, not, you know, and we, I worked with Amazon advertising to try to help us reach our customers do some, some different things that we're beginning to evolve in the e-commerce space. And uh, here I am, and I will be joining another CPG company next week uh, to be announced, but uh, again, be uh, part of the marketing efforts across Omnichannel. So customers aren't just on Amazon anymore. They're on Walmart, they're on Chewy, they're on Target, wherever they are is, is where a CPG customer needs to be. That's, I mean, it's such a great background. So I want to start, let's start, there's so much to talk about in this. Yeah. Week, let's start just with Amazon, because I think Amazon is such an interesting, mm -hmm. when you think of it as, it's so funny, because I, you know, now at having a small business, I think about, okay, where am I going to place my media? Where am I going to get those eyeballs? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, because sometimes I don't think about Amazon. Yeah. You know, I do when I think about a physical product, but since these are courses, which I did find out they have them on Amazon, but yeah. anyway, different story. Anyway, so what's interesting, though, about Amazon is you've got what you were saying is those big sort of branding awareness. You know, you can buy your ads as you mm -hmm. know, the homepage of Amazon, but then it, it added the search component. So when somebody searches for your product, right. you can have the listing, right? You can have this sponsored product when they do that then you can have that sort of middle you know somebody searches for something and now all of a sudden you basically have a brochure about your right and so like there's the levels of engagement that people can have within amazon is amazing how did you see that evolve and what were some of the things that you saw that you're like wow that is smart marketing yeah i think in and i kind of alluded to my intro it started out with very much partnering with companies and saying you know we know what your customer purchases where we know what they're browsing if you special k wants to go after like the healthy more healthy lifestyle we find that person based on the fact that they shopped for yoga mats or are looking at you know high protein bars and so it very much started out very smart targeting and then let's offer them a coupon and let's yeah. encourage them now to shop and that was probably pretty basic and then it evolved into more dynamic ads where we got smarter at well, let's depend on where they are in the funnel. Maybe they're just researching the product. So let's hit them with more of an ad that shows them a, a great review on, on our product. Or maybe they are more down the line funnel closer to purchasing and we're just gonna make it very easy for them to add to cart. So then the, the ads became smarter as we've seen in other digital landscapes. And then it did, as you mentioned, it moved more into search and search became a, a very big uh, component of people's overall marketing mix so it became much more heavy search less display because we, what we were finding i don't know the number now it was 62 and then it was up to 68 more people are searching on amazon than google when wow. looking at products so why not be when they're yeah typing in iphone charger if you're a company that sells those not apple you want to be there and so that was became a very very important place it still is that that is and that's why you see some of these we we like to call them ankle biters but smaller companies having real big success over larger manufacturers or cpg companies because they are nimble they can get in there and figure out what search words they need to use they even you know talk about evolving it's even just creating your product made for an online environment so instead of thinking about what you put on a shelf in a grocery store or on a shelf in an electronic store, in on the shelf on Amazon, it needs to be something that is not two or three dollars. So even thinking about what your product is that puts on Amazon. So it kind of goes beyond just your marketing, which is super important, but onto what your pages look like, what you're carrying, and uh, kind of seeing those those involvements. And I think what people are now seeing is and I think you even said it the last time we talked to him, oh, I, I don't know if I even see ads on Amazon. It's now becoming yeah. much more of a, a, a personalization and experience. And how do you reach those millennials and Gen Z that are all about the experience or giving back and wanting to buy something that 
is from a good company that also does really, you know, treats their employees right. And when we've seen that in the news now and, and how do we, um, and then it's morphing into video, like people just want to research and we want to see how it's done. Like YouTube is great. Yeah. I, how do I change the transition in my car? It's, it's really <laughs> good luck with that. Only Not that great, I can they that. that up. <laughs> it's more like, how do I get this Yahoo search bug that's on my computer <laughs> off? Yes, but that's how it's kind of evolved. And uh, ending more with subscriptions. And how do you get that loyal consumer to keep coming back? And that's something that COVID really shifted um, for a lot of companies is that loyalty. Um, because a lot of things weren't available or what, Ooh, yes. what they you were used to getting is not there. So let's see, let me try retailer X or let me try brand Y. And uh, I might've just switched my, my habit or my In choice. In fact, there was a Kinsey, McKinsey just came out with a fascinating report all about consumer behaviors. And one of them was digital um, uh, shopping is here to say. But, and that, you know, even boomers are starting to realize that it's oh. so much easier just to go online. Millennials are already at 90%. I think Gen right. X is at about 80% if yeah. willing to, you know, do digital shopping. But what was really interesting is they talked about that both uh, brand switching is happening more now and also private label. Oh, because yeah. if you go and you want toilet paper, and you can't get toilet paper, you're not going to go for Charmin. You're going to go for whatever you can get. Desperate times. Call for <laughs> exactly. <desperate measures. laughs> yeah, and that's that's exactly it. One of the, you know, I don't know if you want to jump into the effects of COVID, but yes, that's let's see really, that. I love that. really changed, um, you know, people really, not even just switching brands, but people are just, because maybe their finances are in question or they don't know how long things are going to be are, the way they are. Like the focus is very on value and essentials. So maybe yeah. they're not, they're not, they're only buying groceries and dog food and um, things that they need and, and travel isn't. And some of those luxury things are down, but then it's also the, you know, the product switching, you know, like you said, toilet paper or cereal or whatever they're purchasing, if it's not there and it's not just what's available online, it may be what retailer even has it. So maybe someone's a loyal brick and mortar grocery store shopper and they couldn't get anything they wanted so they did jump online or went to another one um you know some of the other effects were um really just like i just said the flight to digital you know people yeah. not just shopping on amazon but shopping at walmart shopping at target instacart and shipped were huge i mean look at the ads for hiring people for shoppers for all of those and, yeah. and people are not just shopping in one spot they are you know, I, I, I shopped at Aldi's for the first time, like trying to find a place that could give me that delivery curbside. And, and um, really in this kind of vulnerable time, people, like I said, even just in your, how CPGs need to look at it, but people are really much more health conscious and not, not necessarily what I was eating during the thing, but I'm talking about like healthy, clean, healthy. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> really going for... Um, who's going to offer me like the safety and health guidelines that make me feel help, you know, safer shopper yeah. shopping, but are they giving me the packaging that I feel is more sustainable? Like that's again, that millennial Gen Z. And then really it's still a home body economy. People are still going to stay at home right now. No one's completely comfortable with, you know, going back to their normal activities. And so how you, how you talk to that customer and what's available is in a, it's very different now than, than it was six months ago. I think what's really interesting too is there's the, I'm realizing that I don't have to go to the grocery store. I don't have to go to these places to get what I need. I can have it delivered, whether that's Instacart or, you know, mm -hmm. or even Amazon. So I know people who have created that they're essential. So their toilet paper, garbage bags, their, you know, aluminum foil, it just comes. It's yeah. Set. It comes every month or whatever the timeline is. Yeah. They don't even have to think about it. It just, you know, I've set it up, it comes, it shows up. And I think it's really interesting as a consumer 
in those situations, I'm sure you probably have a particular brand that you want. Mm -hmm. But what ends up happening as well is I feel like because things are, if it's, it's got to have value, it's got to be accessible. Yeah, it has to be in stock, like it completely changes what you're willing to buy. Mm -hmm. When the, you start thinking about, you know, it's different when you're browsing the aisles. Like I love going to the grocery store because I don't like to let, make a list. I like to just get whatever at the time. <laughs> so, you're, you're, they you're love like you. a, you're a brand's uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, like the uh, impulse buyer, like, oh, well, I'll have that. Yeah, ex I'm totally impulse buyer. I love it. Um, so you can't do that when you're doing that online. No. You know what I mean, it's like you've got your list, you get your stuff, and then when you have it so that it comes automatically, it completely changes the consumer behavior. So now let's kind of pivot from a CPG perspective. Yeah. I mean, how does that change? Like what, you know, it's funny because they just had a CPG panel on Adweek Learn this today, this morning. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're all like, oh my God, the consumer behavior has completely, completely changed. Right. What are some of the changes that you saw when you, well, I guess, you know, did you see some and what were some of the things that you had to pivot and kind of rethink about as a CPG brand? You know, it's not about shelf space anymore. No. And, and, you know, again, it's, it's the full gamut. It's not just the marketing, but you know, if you run out of a certain product when you're at the grocery store and you're a prime example, you don't have a list, you went by, you're like, Oh, okay. Well, you know, Quaker Oats is here right now. Um, that's okay. It doesn't do anything to your shopper. And if you want it next time, you'll get it. What happens on the digital shelf is if it's not there, doesn't, you don't only bypass it and you can't find it. You might replace it with something else, but then it also affects, the listing for, let's say, if it's Quaker Oats and other oatmeal just falling down in the search results. So you have to be on top as a CPG marketer on top of search at all times. You're almost like your goal is to continue to be in front of your consumers without spending a ton of money and to make sure that, it, you know, your stuff is relevant and it's in stock. I mean, the in stock portion and what you're is, is at important. And so you, you're really seeing, like you, you mentioned it, the private brands are sneaking in and if someone can get some value, they're going to get value. And so our focus a lot became on that loyalty. How do we offer someone, you know, extra money or, or a promotion or a coupon to get them to subscribe? And then how do you even explain that? It's not like, no, you want to subscribe to my product because we want to be, we won't want you yeah. to do anything, but how do we make it easier for you? How does mom not have to worry about going to get diapers at 11 o'clock at night she runs out? It's more about solving, you know, situations, not like in their face marketing. So how do we know because they're going on various different sites and things, how do we make the page that they're going to reflect what they're wanting to research? How do we make it easy? How do we talk to them about the good stuff that maybe Kellogg or another company is doing to give back to the community so they feel even better about buying that product, knowing that, you know, they're donating $2 million a year to Feeding America. Right. So it's 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 evolving into way past what we did at Microsoft. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and I think it's interesting because what you're talking about is brand. It's, it's it. building brand, you know, the story around how do I give back? What is my packaging? Those are like the sort of the brand ethos and how do you bring that to life so people can actually see that. I have a question for you though about private label. What exactly is like, who makes the stuff when it's private label? Is it the same company as like, uh, how does that really, work? I actually don't really, know. It really depends. So Amazon does a, a great, they're doing an amazing private label business across not just CPG, but electronics, I mean, Amazon basics. If oh, you yeah batteries and chargers if you're a competitor like if you're a brand and you want to see you know what is trending at amazon just go see what products they're starting to create like how that oh, how that interesting go there because they or go to the content on their pages they know what makes their platform work so go there so that you're you know, you, you can start to see trends like, hmm. But, you know, as far as private labels like Costco, like the Kirkland brand. So yeah. the Kirkland diapers were manufactured by Huggies. So that's what I wondered. Yeah. So there's all of these menu manufacturers. They'll have their own brands and then they'll have brands that they sell to like Sam's or Costco or, or grocery stores. And I don't know within grocery stores, but, you know, you don't have like 
a private label manufacturer, some bigger manufacturers creating it for, for, you know, these other companies. I figured. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I always think about that. I, when there's two things next to each other and do I get the Kirkland or, you know, the name brand yeah. depending on what it is. Yeah. You know, I, I it will depend on what I choose to, to get, but I think it's so interesting just to see kind of how consumer behavior has changing so much. And I think what's so interesting, like we talked about this, like this is another thing I did not know, which I thought was interesting was that you could buy, let's say I decided to buy a ton of cereal. Mm -hmm. I could get special K I could get, you know, rice Krispies, whatever, and cornflakes. And I could package that as a three pack. And I, per, I could sell that myself. Like mm -hmm. I could take brand name products, package them up and be a retailer and sell that. I think that's, I have no idea. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's a little scary when you're a brand. It, you know, Amazon is the wild, wild west. And they get over, I think, 60% of their revenue from third-party seller. So they're, they, they are getting better now, but they were not doing a, uh, any big efforts or doing a good job of ensuring that those third-party sellers were credible. Now they do, if a certain third party has enough bad reviews, get kicked off. But a consumer who wants cornflakes, they think they're getting it for Kellogg, but they may not be. They, you know what, they're not, like, the average consumer is not trained to look at who the manufacturer yeah. Yeah. Market. And so they think they're doing it. And if it's quality and they're getting it and it's a cheaper price, they're not going to go on and give a bad review. They got what they needed. But it, it was bad for a manufacturer to have all these smaller come in and and then when you are talking about food or even shit had an issue with razors you you know that can be dangerous with what what's what the consumer's eating and then they just assume it's Kellogg and then you have a lot of PR and in customer service to address uh you know because people get behind their their keyboard and lamb based you know a, a brand yeah, and so definitely. companies and law firms out there that are just solely hired by big companies to manage the third party craziness on Amazon and now they did just pass something recently where a third party has to list their name and address. So it's easier if a brand wants to maybe go after them in some sort of way because of ill representation or something. So that just came in in the last month, but it still doesn't, you know, stop you from going in and buying whatever you want and making your own pack and selling it out of your garage. I, that to me is just I know. amazing. As a brand, I would be super worried about that yeah you know i mean like how much you spent all that money trying to build something you know and i think what's so interesting right now I, I think the other thing i've seen that uh cpg brands are doing which i think is so smart is what are those big things that are happening right now like you know people are cooking home more mm -hmm. you know, they're baking bread they're you know doing all of these things that make them feel good to be home and you know so creating recipes and content and when you go to that brand page, they're talking to what's happening right now. Right. It's a content marketing piece of it is so fascinating. Like, I think that's such a great way to get those things you were talking about earlier, the things I stand for, the things that I value, that I'm here to help you with the problem. And I think right. content marketing does a good job with that. Do you see anybody doing a good job in that area? Um, yeah, like, and this is going completely random, but like for Ocean, like they're one of those where you buy the bracelet or the jewelry and part of the money, you know, goes towards waste removal in the ocean. So people are all over that type of thing. Like Tom, I think I mentioned this. Yeah. Tom shoes, you buy a pair of shoes, they're giving a pair. It makes you feel better about buying those shoes if you're giving something better, you know someone else is getting that. And there's a, a bar on Amazon that is is called like give give one, I believe it's called give one. And their sole marketing strategy is anytime you buy one, they're donating a bar to feed a, you know, a, a home, not homeless, but people in need, yeah. you know, people need food. And it's, I, I think those are the ones you're seeing and also the ones that when you solve a problem, I think the, the getting behind the cooking together and bundling. I would say if you're a brand bundle, go out with another partner that's not a non-compete and solve a solution and bundle something together so they can get it all at once. It is still about ease and convenience. And if yeah. you can get the consumer in the mindset of, Hey, you know, you know, um, 
Rice Krispies. Um, I'm going to package the marshy shapes and some things and look at everything you need to make your Rice Krispie treats. Here, you get you just make it easy and put them in that mindset. It's it's a successful tactic for sure. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And I, I, I love when and people I, do that. When they create it all for me, it makes it so much, you know, easier to do that. Um, right. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see just how things change as well, um, you know, as we get farther into this and, and when things change. You yeah. Know, will we get, do we ever get back to, I don't know what normal is going to be anymore. You know, it's going to be so interesting. I, are you having connection issues? I take it. Yeah, I just I I thought it just plugged in, but maybe. We'll give it a minute. I'm sure it'll come back on. Oh, yeah. There, there you go. go. You're back. Woo. So um, yeah, <laughs> I, I think it's. Just, I mean, I think it's really fascinating to see e-commerce today and how it's changing and. I'm excited to kind of see what that means. I think the best part of e-commerce is that anyone can sell something. I mean, it's yeah. completely, anyone can build a brand, anyone can create a product. Um, and I yeah. think that's, you know, it's just at, between Etsy and, you know, we've got just so many opportunities between Amazon and, and marketplaces. The other thing that I think is really interesting, we kind of talked about this as well, is that, you know, Amazon knows that it has all of these people coming if a lot of eyeballs so obviously it makes sense for them to create advertising products and you know really find a way to help people help brands with their marketing but it sounds like target walmart they're all or kroger are doing they're all doing something very yeah. similar where they're creating their own like media networks right yeah they can you explain are. that a little Sorry. bit yeah, so Amazon obviously was the first in and, you know, media group and really providing both the platform and, you know, the the data to, you know, advertise in a smart way. Walmart has now created theirs or catches on very quickly. I think they, one thing they, they stepped back and saw, got a lot of learnings from the first mover. Uh-oh. wagon of realize have good places for people to go and that they're creating the same network that that Amazon did and and it, it just shows when you have a oh I think I lost oh. to go across so it's not just hey I, let's spend this much on Amazon oh do you, am I there yeah so it is yeah. making it for someone within is on a brand budget. I got to make sure I have enough money for Kroger. I have to make sure I have enough money for those of my customers that are Walmart shoppers. So you really have to to look at the omni-channel perspective of e-commerce. It's not just an Amazon game alone any longer. Yeah, and it's interesting because when you think about the amount of money was always spent in in store, you know, to get those end caps. You know, to yeah. get that prime placement to, you know, that's, I would imagine, you know, a, a big chunk of the budget. It feels like everyone's having to really shift how they plan and what their marketing budgets look like. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think those end caps and they're no way that still, they still have their, their play with a, with a consumer, much like you. Pulse buyer see, sees that end cap. Uh, but what's interesting is it's going to, it's going to be. It's going to be interesting to see how Walmart starts competing with Amazon because Walmart has all these stores. So we talk about supply chain and those things. They can pull from their vast network of stores, whereas Amazon, they're building stores or, you know, they Amazon Go stores. And there's that whole new technology of just walking in and taking. But they don't have the vast network that Walmart has. So it'll be interesting to see how quick Walmart can catch up to Amazon in that regard, the supply chain, you know, par portion of it. Yeah, and it's funny, I actually was shopping on Walmart recently for exercise equipment. And it was interesting because for, they had a huge array of stock. And I thought, you know what, it's, it reminded me of Amazon. It made me think, wow, they, it's obviously this is way beyond what they would ever have in the store. 
but that it was mm-hmm. reminded was very similar to that. And I thought, okay, yeah. this is, they are going to be sort of that new Amazon, but they're going to have, like you said, an ability to go pick it up if you want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I think that'll be really interesting to see just how things continue to change. Thank God for e-commerce yeah, though. That's no question that that's what Amazon was looking at for buying Whole Foods. It wasn't yeah. just to own a store. It was partly to associate their name with a vast, you know, grocery store chain and to get people more and more comfortable as they are, are shopping. But there'll be the, no question that supply chain and, and that portion is part, part of the overall plan for them. And, and getting yeah. an brilliant about bringing the user in, not just to shop, shop but hey, let's content as far as movies and Amazon originals and let's get people hooked into coming to watch, watching our stuff and then let's let's buy you know this easy farm pack where your pills come in I mean they're just spreading out into so many areas to mm-hmm. make a consumer easier it's a little scary but I know I'm surprised I don't want to buy TikTok I can't believe I, Microsoft's gonna buy that that's so interesting yeah yeah I know people are, are nervous about Uh oh. Every 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 kid in the world is on that. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, kind of go in and out a little bit. Do no, you not have really good Wi Fi right there? It happens. We'll let you unfreeze. There you go. It could just be your internet. Connection. Okay, now I, I I'm back. Yeah. Yeah, I my plugging in or something. Huh, that's weird. I'm back. Well, we'll let you kind of. Back. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Just technology moved. always happens. I feel like I have to plug in. Like it's it's something to do with battery or something. You mean but... your phone? All right, Are we'll you try doing this. Your phone? Lisa. <laughs> huh. Yes. Yeah. But we'll let you come back on. Anyway, I think it's just, I love the whole conversation. I think it's so interesting, everything that's going on in the world of e-commerce. And you have such an incredible background, you know, going into, uh, from Amazon, then to, you know, a DBG company. Um, I think it's just fascinating. And I think, you know, when we think about e-commerce, a lot of times people think about, you know, the a very small, you know, e-commerce like business where it's, you know, <laughs> few products but it's so interesting to think about it from the brand perspective these are huge companies you would think that they know everything about e-commerce but they don't because it's a different way of how they've been you know really marketing and packaging and selling their you know their stuff forever yeah i mean and, and it's sometimes it's harder for the bigger companies to pivot because they've been doing the brick and mortar for so long that even just some of the back end things from a finance perspective and how e-commerce is funded differently is, is it's, it's a big learning for them and, and, and pivoting into that new way. And it's sometimes easier for these smaller companies to start creating an e-commerce viable pack the company a lot longer to, to build out and get into their, you know, into their repertoire. So uh, it, 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 e-commerce obviously it hits the brands, it hits the marketing, it hits the finance, Finance, the supply chain, it's sales or casting, you know, you can, you know, just having to forecast and, and when these prime days, a prime, yeah, prime example, but it is a great example. Yeah. And back to school, maybe a good, you know, big time for the CPG brands, but all of a sudden they're having to pivot and say, we need to be ready for prime day because everyone is going to Amazon during this time. And they may not be looking for cereal, but they, if, cereals around when they're looking for their backpack and other things then we need to be there so it's really adjusting even your marketing plan to to incorporate your tentpole events and your things and that are important to your company but also how do we how do we also play in with what the you know, with the ecom channel is plan than just when is the amazon prime day now It's always in July, but they've moved it back to October sometime. It's always kind okay. of a secret. 
Uh, it used to be one day, then it was two. Last year it was a week. But now with COVID and, and just major supply chain constraints, they're moving to October, which will be kind of interesting and exciting because then that moves right into kind of the no November. Holiday. Yeah. Black Cyber Monday into holiday, which is just a crazy time for Amazon anyway. So they're, they're just going to start launching it in where they're going to capitalize on, on everyone's shopping behavior during that time. Yeah, it's going to be really, really interesting. I, well, so I know you're going to start a new job. We can't talk about it yet, but I want to have you back and do this again yes. in a few months and hear about the e-commerce, what it's, that means for your new role and the brand that you're working for. I'm super excited about that. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, before we leave that, so tell me a little bit what's, what's happening in Detroit. You know, I think when people think of Detroit, they always think about the, you know, cars, but there's so much more going on in Detroit, right? Yeah, there is. It's, it's not, uh, not just about auto. They are obviously a very big, uh, big, big component of, of our industry, but there's their CPG here bank and financial. Uh, cannabis is a big thing here now, because now legal. It's amazing, the cannabis industry. You know, there's just- Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. There's a lot of industry here. Yeah, and, and loans and, and uh, Dan have uh, really built out like downtown Detroit and the restaurants. It's really come a long way from where it was beyond just beyond autos, even though Yes, they are still a a big behemoth within our city, but there are many other opportunities. Healthcare, it, it's really a, a vast network here in Detroit. That's exciting. I love that. And then for those people who do find this and are looking to be educated on cannabis, we have an amazing cannabis marketing master course. <laughs> oh, that's what you do. I, it, yeah, I, it's I, really I, I good. To, there's a lot of shit. There is a lot of competition yeah. for marketing smart. smart got to be something and there's you know different different ways to uh to handle that i'm sure yeah and i think what's really interesting about cannabis and a lot of people don't in order to market cannabis i feel like you have to really understand the plant itself because if you're a smart marketer you're marketing more than you know the fact that it's cbd or thc you're marketing the cannabinoids you're marketing the terpenes you're marketing you know enough about the plant that you can use the essence of it to make your product appeal. Yeah. Like, you know, and you have to stand out because it's super competitive and our course goes through all of that. Um, and it's just, it's really, really fascinating. I've learned so much. I just, it's really cool. And it's fun to see more of the different, um, uh, you know, states become legal. And I think that's only going to continue to grow. So anyway, I want to yeah. I want to be uh, respectful of your time because it's a little bit over one o'clock or well, four o'clock your time. Um, but I'm so glad you joined me today. It was good to catch up. Yeah. And yeah. I'm serious. We'll do this again in a few months. It's always catch up. And um, I will say. Sounds good. That, oh. Yeah, I'll save it so people can always find it. And then I'll send you a copy too if you ever want to put it on your posts, you know, anywhere you want. Okay. Awesome. Great. Thanks. All Liz. right. All right. All Have right. Talk to you later. Bye, Jill. Bye.